Hi everyone, this is Trevor Stevens from Ruckus Training. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to configure a standard access control list on a Ruckus ICX switch. The easiest way for me to demonstrate this is, I guess, to first introduce my lab environment to you. And in my lab, I have a Ruckus ICX 7150C12P switch. I have configured two VLANs, VLAN 10 and VLAN 20. And of course, I have certain Ethernet ports that are untagged for those two VLANs. I have also configured two virtual Ethernet interfaces, VE10 and VE20. <coughs> VE10 is in the 192.168.10.1 network. VE20 is in 192.168.20.1. Both of those VLANs are running a DHCP server and give the clients or hosts an IP address. LAN segments, I have two devices connected to VE10. One is a Ruckus H320 access point and a Windows 10 laptop. In VE20, I have a second H320 access point and a MacBook Pro. As I've said, both those devices get IP addresses on those <clears throat> networks, 192.168.10 and the 20 network. So that is the lab. <clears throat> Let's go in and take a look how to actually configure a standard access control list. Um, I am SSH'd in to my 7150 switch. And I'm using SSH. I've gone into enable mode and I simply run a configure terminal to go into the configuration. The first line of config is IP access control list. As I said, we are building a standard access list. I then have to specify a number, and the number is from 1 to 99. In this demonstration, I will use number 1. Right, now I need to go and create some deny or permit or allow certain IP addresses. And standard access control lists only use source addresses. Um, the way the access control list is read is very similar to a firewall rule. They are read top down and as soon as um, we have a match, that rule is applied immediately. It's also important to take note that by default, um, access control lists have an implicit deny all statement at the end. So it is important that you, know, you do have a permit statement, at least one permit statement built into your access control list. Now, just to give you an idea, um, I'm going to run an IP config. This is on the Windows 10 machine that is currently connected, um, you know, to the VE10 virtual interface. It got an IP address from DHCP using one nine uh, of one nine two one six eight ten dot twenty two. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to deny that IP address. So I'm going to go deny. And I'm going to go 192.168.10.22. And that will basically deny that source address <clears throat> from being able to access the network. Very, very simple. Um, let me just show you what this is going to look like. Um, let me just bring up my lab environment. So what we are saying is, is that my laptop over here which has that address 192.168.10.22 should not be able to access any of the client devices in VE20 or for that matter actually be able to go out and access my internet router. Now, <clears throat> to continue with the configuration, we now need a permit rule and I'm just going to use permit any um, if I use the question mark with permit question mark, you know, we can permit a DNS host name, an IP address or an entire subnet or permit any, the one I've used or even a single host IP address. 
So that's what it looks like. But we have said permit any, and of course there is that implicit deny statement at the end of the access control list. Um, <clears throat> to verify that the ACL is working, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run an extended ping to Google DNS, and as you can see, it is successful. Um, I'm now going to start out by applying this access control list. Um, the switch is running router code. Um, that's the reason we can go and create these um, virtual Ethernet interfaces, the VEs. And I'm going to start out by applying this access control list to VLAN 10. We go into our VLAN 10 configuration. The command we run is IP access group. So we do not use an access list, we use access group one, and we need to specify a direction, whether that is inbound traffic or outbound traffic. And I'll show you, you can use either in for inbound packets or out for outbound packets. I'm going to be using in. As soon as I apply the ACL to VLAN 10, I now get request timeouts on my ping or my ICMP. And the reason for that is we have blocked this host from being able to access the network. So there you have it, you know, that is very, very simple. It's easy to configure. And, um, you know, if I go and remove it, if I say IP access, sorry, no IP access group one in, in other words, I remove it, um, you know, you'll see the traffic should start flowing again. And there we have a reply from Google DNS. Guys, there's one other thing I'd, I'd like to show you all. Um, if I do a show run and I look at my access lists, um, when I go and create my access list here, we've called it standard one. You will see sequence numbers. Um, you know, the first line of config we put in gets assigned sequence number 10. The second line that we put in is sequence 20. Um, <clears throat> and as I've said, it reads the ACL top down. Now, I could build this access control list and I could decide, well, hang on a sec, I want to add a rule in between sequence 10 and 20. You can do that by using the Sorry, let me just get back into the right config. So we would go config access list IP access list standard one. And we could then start out with a sequence number. So we could then go sequence 11 and we could then say Deny one nine two one six eight ten dot zero slash twenty four as an example. So that's how we would, you know, sort of insert a line of config. Um, you know, when we already have our sequences, let's say ten, twenty, thirty, and we wanted to, you know, put a sequence number of eleven or twelve in, we could. And again, those rules are read top down. So guys, I hope this is useful. Um, whenever you think about configuring standard access control lists, please refer to this video. I hope it was informative and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.